Hey, this is Tyler with Diesel Geek, and today's video covers the Mark V, Mark VI console removal. We're going to start at the back here by removing this cover, and then we will take this back cover off. It, it pulls up this way. Basically, you want to insert the plastic trim tool here and work it off on either side. Next, you're gonna have a T20 Torx screw. All the fasteners on this job are T20 Torx, but there's a T20 Torx screw here and one on the other side here, just mirror imaging. Then we'll lift this lid and get this parking brake really, really high. And we'll pop this cover back here. There'll be a T20 securing it and then We'll need to bring this auxiliary input um, rearward, get the, get the top first, and then reach from below with your 90 degree pick and get the bottom edge. And basically the top and the bottom have to slide out fairly evenly. And then once you have it out, you can just depress this tab on the electric connector here and then pull it forward, come out. Then we can lift this rear section of the console up and off. Next, we're going to tackle this lower panel here. You have a T20 Torx in this hole here. Once that screw is removed, you'll just grasp the edges here and pull down firmly and it's held on by three clips. Sometimes the clips stay up here where they're supposed to and sometimes they stick with the lower panel like they're not supposed to and we'll show you where this goes inside once we have this free because you want to have the clips on this panel not this panel when you're doing your reinstallation. Next we will lift the back edge of the shifter surround first and then work it up kind of turn it inside out like that if you're replacing the shaft bushings you'll need to take the knob off uh, if you're not replacing the shaft bushings you can just leave it like this and the it'll uh, the, the console will come around the surround but anyway to remove the shifter knob you insert your hose pick here and just rotate this back and forth and kind of stretch that clamp open. Um, that way you can go back and reuse this clamp later. Uh, or you can cut it and replace the clamp, but that's, this is a little more elegant. And then just pull. You have some sound insulation that's kind of clipped in, but you just compress the frame inward on itself and lift it on off. Next, we start taking screws out. Um, there'll be a screw here and a screw here. And once those are out, then you can lift this and remove the forward compartment. You're gonna have a connector uh, similar to that media connector. You just have a, a tab that you depress either with your thumbnail or with a pick. Um, and then the same goes for the 12 volt outlet guy you just compress it and it'll release next we can remove the bottom edge of the climate control surround and the bottom edge of the radio surround you don't have to take this all the way off you just need to flex it up enough that you can then dislodge the clips on the top of the climate control surround now, this airbag light, um, we do need to unplug it, but you really don't want to have your ignition on uh, at any time when this is unplugged, or otherwise it will set an airbag light and you will have to go get it cleared or buy a special tool to do it. Um, this connector works like the others. You just flex the, uh, flex the tab down like that. Um, up here, high, 
There are a T20 here and here that need to be removed. Then we'll pull this panel down and back. And there's a T20 here and here. Now, this forward section of the console will just slide back. And out. Next, we can remove a screw here and here. A little more light there. You can see that guy. And there's a corresponding one on this inside edge over here. On this inside edge over here. We also have a screw down here in this cup holder. You will probably have a little rubber circle that you need to dig out of there with the screwdriver. Then once all the screws are out of the plate out of the way, you can bring this back up front and let it drop down a bit. And you can it's it's a little it's flexible in the front. You don't want to abuse the part, but you can push it forward a little bit, but also have your parking brake very high and get it to slip by. And this can get out. Now to at this point you've got access here if you need to drill a hole to do your front to back cable end bushing, you can do that. Um, if you want to access the first gear getter area or install our super pin, you will need to remove this duct. In order to move, remove that duct, you first have to lift this duct that's in the stowage compartment up and slide it, slide it back. So you have to pull up pretty firmly and it'll pop off of a barb there. And then you just have to bring this duct back through the window a little bit. And then once you have it far enough back, you can, you can just barely push this, you can flex this front duct forward and push it to the right until it's clear. And then once it's clear, you can lift it up and guide it off of the distribution housing up front. And now you have good access to this area here. Um, so if you're doing a super pin um, and you need to get at this forward pivot um, or on the earlier cars, this will be a screw. Um, you've got access there and that's your side to side cable end bushing there, which you can access and uh, replace through this hole uh, here. So installation is basically just the reverse of removal with the primary note that if that, that the panel, uh, the lower panel clips, you want to be installed in their homes in this part of the console, not on the side panels. So if some of your clips came off with the side panel like ours did, just pop them off and put them here, install them in the appropriate locations. Um, before you go ahead and put this thing back in because it's a lot easier to do it now while you can look down into it than when you're trying to fish that stuff up uh, with your head in the floor mat. Thanks for watching. That's about it.